This year, public health nurses will soon visit your school to administer your grade seven vaccinations. We hope that this video will help you and your parents or guardians make informed choices about your health when it comes to vaccines. Vaccines like eating well, staying active, or taking medicine are important health choices. When deciding what's best for you and your health, it's important to learn about the options available. Make sure to get information from a trusted source that is up to date and accurate. Healthcare providers call this evidence-based or evidence-informed information. We encourage you to watch this video with your parents or guardians. After watching, please fill out a grade seven vaccination consent form together on the public health website, even if you aren't going to receive vaccines at school or have already had the vaccines. This way, public health will know the decision you've made when we come for your school's vaccine clinic. To start is a short video on vaccinations from sick kids. Vaccines at school. Hi, I'm Angelo. I'm going to talk about getting a vaccination at school. I did some research about it before my vaccinations and it really helped me. So I thought it might be useful to share some of the things I learned before you get your vaccinations. Our bodies are fighting germs, viruses, and infectious diseases all the time. Vaccines are medicines you can take to prevent some of these diseases before they even happen. Some of them are taken by mouth. Most have to be given with a needle to work. Almost all of us have had these in the doctor's office when we were babies. Vaccines help the body protect itself by telling it what the disease looks like so it can prepare ahead of time. Then, if the body gets the disease in the future, it knows how to fight it. Vaccines have worked so well, some of these diseases have almost disappeared. People all over the world struggle with a bunch of nasty diseases every day. But people who are vaccinated have immunity. Diseases don't hurt them as much. That's why it's called immunization. By getting vaccinated, you protect yourself and everyone around you. How? By stopping the spread of the disease. The more people who get immunized, the harder it is for anyone to get sick. This especially protects those who aren't immunized, like babies or your grandparents. This is called community immunity. Vaccinations do not guarantee you won't get sick from infections. There are other things you should do too. I'm sure you already know about this. Wash your hands often, cover your cuts and your sores, don't share things that have come in contact with your saliva or your blood. But back to the general point, our best defense against some diseases is a vaccine. There are some people who shouldn't get vaccinated, but the number is very small. This includes people who have a severe allergy called anaphylaxis. If you're too sick to come to school, wait until you're feeling better before getting vaccinated. And if you've had a serious reaction to a vaccine in the past, or if you have certain medical conditions, or if you take certain medications, talk to your doctor first to find out if it's okay for you to be vaccinated. If for any of these reasons, someone isn't vaccinated, they will still benefit from community immunity. If most people are vaccinated, together they'll protect the few who can't be. So what if you have none of these things? You're good to go. What now? Here's how to prepare for vaccination at school. First, remember your permission form. Read the info package. Both you and your parent or legal guardian needs to sign the form with a pen and return or submit the permission form back to the school by the due date. If you have any questions, ask a nurse or a doctor or ask your parents to contact public health. On the day of the vaccination, wear short sleeves or something easy to pull up so your upper arm is free. Also bring something to help you distract your mind. Here's a play-by-play -play on what will happen. You'll be called out of the classroom to another room and you'll sit down in a comfortable chair beside a public health nurse. The nurse will ask you some questions and make sure they have your signed permission form. Then they'll give you the vaccine with the needle. Most kids feel a pinch and some pressure or some pushing when they're given a needle. Needle injections only last a few seconds. The nurse will then ask you how you feel and you'll have a buddy or adult to look after you just in case you don't feel that well. The nurse will also help by answering your questions and ask you to relax your arm, giving you some choices also, like what position you want to be, if you want to bring in a friend to help you, 
They also try to give your injection as quickly as possible and distract you if you feel like you want to. The side effects of a vaccination are mild and don't last long, usually a few minutes to a few days. You might get a sore arm or some redness and or swelling, but this won't stop you from doing what you want to do. You can still use your arm normally. It shouldn't get in the way of your usual activities. Vaccination is part of a healthy lifestyle. It's something we all do to keep ourselves healthy. So on behalf of everyone that you will protect by getting immunized, I thank you for doing your part to promote good health for everyone. Nurses from Public Health will visit your school to provide three different vaccines to protect against hepatitis B, meningococcal disease, and human papillomavirus, commonly known as HPV. This chart is an example of a standard dosing schedule for grade seven vaccines. Typically, all three vaccines will be given the first time the nurses visit your school. Which vaccines you receive will depend on what you and your parents or guardians consent to on the grade seven vaccination form. Some vaccines need more than one dose to work, so the nurses will come back in the spring to give the second dose. Let's review each of these diseases, starting with hepatitis B or hep B. As you may know, the liver is an organ that acts like a filter, cleaning your blood, removing toxins, storing energy, and helping with digestion. The hepatitis B virus can cause liver disease and cancer, harming your liver so it doesn't work properly. Hepatitis B can spread when you come into contact with the bodily fluids of someone who is infected, like their blood, semen, or vaginal secretions. For example, hepatitis B can be transferred from unsterilized tattoo equipment and used needles. You cannot get hepatitis B from saliva or spit. So kissing, hugging, sharing food utensils, holding hands, coughing and sneezing cannot spread the virus. People infected with hepatitis B may not have any symptoms at all. If they do, they might feel weak or have vomiting, diarrhea, dark pee, or yellowing of the skin and eyes. You can protect yourself by getting a full series of the hepatitis B vaccine. It's also important to wash your hands often, cover cuts, and avoid sharing personal items like toothbrushes, razors, or nail clippers. Next is meningococcal disease, or meningitis, which is an infection that causes swelling of the meninges, which is a membrane that lines the brain and spinal cord. Your brain is the boss of the body and controls all of your body's functions. The spinal cord is a tube that acts as a superhighway to carry information from the brain to the rest of the body. While there are different kinds of meningitis infection, the type we're talking about today is caused by a bacteria. Meningitis is spread from person to person. The bacteria is spread by saliva or spit and can travel through the air when coughing, sneezing, kissing, or through contact with saliva on things such as food, toothbrushes, vapes, or water bottles. People with meningitis can feel very sick and have symptoms such as fever, severe headache, stiff neck, nausea, vomiting, painful joints, and a purplish skin rash. Meningitis doesn't occur very often, but when it does, it is very serious, progresses quickly, and can cause injury to your brain and even death. By law, you need this vaccine to go to school in Ontario unless a special legal form is filled out by your parents or guardians or doctor and sent to public health. Finally, let's talk about human papillomavirus, or HPV. HPV is the most widespread sexually transmitted infection in Canada and can affect anyone, no matter their gender. It spreads through sexual contact and bodily fluids such as blood, semen, and vaginal secretions. If you're sexually active, including through skin-to-skin -skin contact, you can be at risk. There are about 200 types of HPV. For some people, an HPV infection goes away without causing any health issues. However, if it doesn't go away, HPV is responsible for almost all cases of cervical cancer and is linked to other cancers as well. 
Certain types of the virus can also cause genital warts. Unfortunately, there's no cure for HPV, regardless of the type. Most people with HPV don't realize they're infected because they often don't have symptoms or health problems. However, they can still easily pass the virus to others without knowing. You can protect yourself by getting a complete series of the HPV vaccine, known as Gardasil 9, before becoming sexually active. This vaccine guards against nine types of HPV that are most likely to cause HPV-related cancers and genital warts. You can also stay safe by delaying sexual activity, limiting your number of sexual partners, and always using protection. You'll learn more about this in health class. Without the HPV vaccine, about 75% of Canadians will get an HPV infection sometime in their life. Now that we know more about the vaccines you may be getting at school, let's review the card system. It's normal to feel nervous about getting needles, but following the card method can help make vaccination easier. The card strategy helps reduce anxiety during medical procedures. Card stands for comfort, ask, relax, and distract. Take a moment to pause this video to discuss with the adult you're watching this video with the different techniques you may already use to feel better when you're nervous. Next, we'll discuss some tips that other kids might find helpful. The C in card stands for comfort. To help feel more comfortable while getting your vaccine, you can bring something that makes you feel better, like a favorite toy. Make sure you also pick a position that you're comfortable in, such as sitting or lying down. If you need a private space, the nurses will try their best to accommodate you. The A stands for ask. Before getting your vaccine, it can be helpful to ask any questions you may have to understand what's going to happen. Knowing what to expect can help you feel more confident. R stands for relax. To help stay calm, you can do things like deep breathing or muscle exercises. One way to relax is belly breathing. Inhale slowly through your nose for four seconds, imagining your belly inflating like a balloon. Hold for two seconds, then exhale slowly through your mouth, deflating your belly. Wait another two seconds and repeat. Another way to relax is muscle tension. Practice tensing and releasing major muscle groups like your legs and tummy. This helps keep blood pressure up and prevents dizziness, especially if you feel dizzy or faint during needles. Finally, D stands for distract. You may find it helpful to focus on something else while getting your vaccine. Depending on your school, you could play a game, watch a video, or read a book to take your mind off the procedure. Before your school's vaccine clinic, an online consent package will be emailed home. Everything you've learned in this video can also be found on the public health website, along with a consent form you and your parents or guardians will need to fill out. Here are some important guidelines for filling out the consent form. Please complete the online grade 7 vaccination consent form either sent by the school or located on the Niagara Region Public Health's vaccine website. By doing so before the clinic date, you'll indicate whether you wish to receive all, some, or none of the vaccines at your school. Please check yes or no for all health history questions. If any yes answers are checked, please provide an explanation in the comments section. For example, if allergies are checked yes, please describe the allergy. It's important to also report any previous vaccines to public health to ensure your vaccination record is up to date. On the day of the clinic, remember to wear a short sleeve t-shirt, eat breakfast, and bring your distraction of choice. The vaccination clinic will be set up in the school library, gym, or an empty room. The setup will look similar to the photo provided. Each nurse will have their own station to give you your injections. The nurses giving the vaccines are specially trained and very good at what they do. When you get your vaccines, the nurse will ask you the same questions that are on the online consent form. They'll ask if you have any allergies, about your medical history, if you take any medications, or if there's a chance you could be pregnant. These questions are important to make sure it's safe for you to get the vaccine at school. If there are any concerns, the nurse will contact your parents or guardians. While at the clinic, you can help yourself and your friends by staying calm, being positive, giving encouragement, bringing a distraction aid, distracting others, helping with deep breathing, or by being a buddy for a friend. It can help to have a close friend by your side to comfort you while getting your needles. 
Choose a buddy who will take their role seriously and who can stay calm. If the nurses see that the buddy is not helping you, they might ask you to choose a different support. After receiving your vaccine, you'll need to stay in the recovery area for 15 minutes. During this time, please sit quietly and face forward. The nurses need to focus and provide privacy while giving immunizations to other students. You can use your distraction items during this time if needed. Once the 15 minutes are up, you can go back to class. If a friend came with you to provide support, they can return to class after you get your vaccines as the waiting period doesn't apply to them. Please let the nurse know if you're not feeling well before you go back to class. We hope this video has better prepared you for your upcoming vaccinations. If you decide not to receive vaccines at school this year, but would like to receive them elsewhere, please contact your healthcare provider or reach out to us at Public Health to schedule an appointment. For any questions about the vaccines offered at school or the process of completing the online consent form, please call our Vaccine Preventable Disease Program at 905-688-8248, extension 7425. You can also visit our website below to check out our vaccine information page.